Good evening and welcome to the news of Ashuraq TV. Our headlines tonight include Sudan announces closing of the state's borders for curbing COVID-19. The indictment of 1989 coup marked the beginning of the rule of law. The Zaka Chamber in Medani distributed 7.7 .7 million pounds for poor. The Supreme Committee for Health Emergency stated that the number of affected people by COVID-19 is increased due to the illegal movement between states. The Emergency Committee stressed that it is too early for talking about the decrease of the pandemic, pointing out that they may take hard procedures to control the virus, affirming that the movement from Khartoum to states and vice versa is stopped except for the people who have license. The committee has listened to the report's recommendations of different ministries and its preparation to continue its work. According to reports, the committee observed the increasing of cases at Khartoum and states more than 8,000 cases. The committee also stated that it observed that people were not applying the health procedures against COVID-19 in different places. The committee also added that it may take more difficult procedures to control the pandemic and called on people to take the issue seriously. Lawyer Muawiyah Khidir, member of the indictment body in the trial case of Omar al-Bashir's coup, confirmed that holding the first session of this historic trial of the 30th of June coup plotters is the beginning of a state of law, institutions and justice. He said that the defendants face the charge of undermining the constitutional system under Article 96 of the Sudanese Criminal Law of 1983 and Article 78 of the same law, which is participation in the Criminal Act. On the other hand, Mr. Muhammad al Hazar al-Amin, the representative of the Defense Authority, considered in press statements that the facts under the defendants are being tried have lapsed because the limitation was more than 10 years. He said that al-Bashir carried out a national reconciliation with Dr. John Garang in southern Sudan by signing a peace agreement in 2005 under the auspices of the United Nations, the League of the Arab States, the African Union, and the European Union, which is an international recognition of the rescue system, as he claimed. The Deputy Dean of the Faculty of Law, University of Khartoum, member of the organizing committee, Dr. Ahmed Abdel Qadir, confirmed when addressing today the National Building and Democratic Transition Forum that today's session is the end of the seven day discussions on constitutional and political reform. Among the most important recommendations agreed upon and secured by the Minister of Justice will be a work program for the transitional government represented in the Ministry of Justice in relation to the constitution and legislative reform. The sessions affirm the necessity to put principles above the constitution which are stable and are not subject to amendments and change as it was agreed to establish a national commission for legal reform and this commission carries out the task of legal reform within the framework of a comprehensive and integrated view in Sudan's situation and its future prospects. Member of the Transitional Sovereign Council, Aisha Musa, was briefed on the conditions of private and foreign education in Khartoum State. This came when she met the delegation of the Preparatory Committee for Parents of Private and Foreign Schools in the Republican Palace. The committee member Ismail Khalifa said that the meeting discussed the tuition fees, curricula and the school environment in addition to the implementation of the 2015 law for private education and the role of parents in drafting the special education law of 2020. The Zakat Chamber distributed 7.7 .7 million pounds in Medani this morning to 3,080 families in the local villages and neighborhoods by 2,500 pounds for each family to revive the values of solidarity in society. Sumaya Said, director of the Zakat Chamber in Medani, said that the social support that is being distributed came in place of the food basket program that the Bureau used to give out due to the corona pandemic and now it was distributed in cash. Sumaya told about the large roles of the chamber to alleviate poverty. Governor of South Darfur, Hashim Khalid, received the final report of Tulus event, which happened between Rizigat and Falata by the head of investigation committee, Bashir Sanosi. The governor appreciated the efforts of the committee to reach the final results 
calling for the cessation of hostilities between the two parties. The head of the investigation committee reviewed the facts of the committee's work since its formation until it reached the final report on the recent Toulouse events. The Higher Council for Peace on Monday agreed on a joint position on the security arrangements that the Sudanese government negotiating team will adopt in the talks with the armed groups in Juba. The agreement was announced in a statement released by the Sovereign Council after the second meeting by the Peace Council on the security arrangements in less than a week. The meeting was chaired by Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, head of the Transitional Sovereign Council, with the participation of its members from the Sovereign Council, the Cabinet and the Forces for Freedom and Change. Suleiman Dibello, the head of the Peace Commission and the Council's rapporteur, said that the meeting has reached a clear vision on the security arrangements and the Minister of Defence was tasked to put it on the negotiating table in Juba. The government and the Sudanese Revolutionary Front discussed the security arrangements through video conference last June but did not finalise an agreement on this chapter of the peace agreement. However, the need to convince the international community of its seriousness to end insecurity and attack on civilians may push the government to make some concessions in this report. Reminding headlines. Sudan announces closing of the state's borders for curbing COVID-19. The indictment of the 1998 coup marked the beginning of the rule of law. A zakat chamber in Medani distributed 7.7 .7 million pounds for the poor. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was everything for tonight. Thank you for following and see you tomorrow.